The emergency procedure you are watching is a computer simulation by KORF. KORF is the acronym for Computer Aided Operations Research Facility, a technology transfer to marine safety and transportation research from NASA's space program. The only person who knows what scenario the crew will encounter is the KORF research coordinator. He initiates the program, whether it includes failing systems on board or if the ship is on a collision course with another vessel. The simulator, used for the Apollo lunar missions, helps maritime researchers to develop a database to analyze collisions and study ship control, navigational, and operational procedures. 80% of maritime accidents are caused by human error. An integral part of KORF research measures and evaluates the human factor and performance. While the ship's captain and helmsman are plunged into the throes of a critical situation, their performance is monitored and evaluated. The most unique feature of the KORF simulator is the 37 and a half meter panoramic screen that allows a realistic view from the wheelhouse. Everything is projected from the central digital computer system, which can replay, reset, or freeze a situation at any point in time. With increased shipping traffic in our nation's waterways and harbors, crews must be able to handle high-pressure situations at all times. The bigger the ship, the bigger the problems, and the larger the investment in safety research. The experimental possibilities inherent in the kind of computer simulations that put men on the moon and brought them safely back to Earth brings us closer to refining our capabilities in handling situations in our own environment. Energy is growing short. We are entering an age of conservation. Soaring fuel costs have altered our lifestyles more than any one item in our economic structure. During the 1970s in the aviation field, fuel rose from the least expensive operating cost for commercial airlines to the most expensive. Fuel doubled the cost of crew, airline maintenance, and operating expenses by the mid-70s. By 1979, the cost of fuel quadrupled. Energy efficiency is a prime objective in NASA aeronautics research. Scientists and researchers continue to develop various technologies to cut fuel consumption through aircraft structure and engine design. Winglets cut wind resistance. NASA scientists develop the advanced winglet technology to cut wind drag, thereby increasing air speed and cutting fuel consumption. Gates Learjet included the advanced winglet technology, as well as a more fuel-efficient turbofan engine, in their new series. Private manufacturers are encouraged to incorporate NASA technologies into their products. In this way, the benefits of NASA research touches our everyday lives on a much broader and more effective scale. The 15 tilt rotor research aircraft combines the vertical takeoff capability of the helicopter with the speed, range, and fuel economy of a turboprop airplane. Once airborne, the rotors tilt forward for cruise flight at about 640 kilometers per hour. NASA researchers see vertical takeoff aircraft as commercially useful, especially in crowded urban airports. 
These types of aircraft use less room for takeoff and landing and keep noise and air pollution lower than our present commercial planes. As aircraft design has changed rapidly over the last 70 years, NASA scientists and researchers continue to develop new ways to improve aeronautic research for energy efficiency. Scientists at NASA Langley Research Center are developing and testing special composite lightweight materials that are used in building spacecraft. The composite material is made of graphite filaments impregnated with an epoxy resin. Aircraft made with composite lightweight structures save fuel. The composite structures cut the number of parts which cut manufacturing costs. NASA is presently testing secondary aircraft structures on commercial airlines. Scientists at NASA Lewis Research Center have developed an energy efficient engine which promises 15 to 20 percent in fuel savings. The engine not only promises the aeronautics industry energy efficiency, but a reduction in noise and air pollution. Aeronautic engineering is going back to propellers. Researchers are testing the prop fan with lasers in a wind tunnel. The prop fan, which promises a major step in commercial aircraft propulsion, will enable a plane to travel at jetliner speeds, yet provide a 30 to 35 percent lower fuel consumption than current engines. As fuel prices soar and the threat of dwindling resources hovers, NASA scientists continue to design fuel-efficient aircraft to help our future needs. Test shots demonstrate how the airflow over the cab of the truck creates a wind drag, which ultimately costs money in spent fuel. Some trucks are now equipped with an aerodynamically designed shield. The shield deflects the wind over the back of the trailer, giving the trucker a more fuel efficient rig. Another design is a pump like modification on the trailer to increase the truck's streamlining. Both designs are technologies derived from NASA aeronautic research and then applied to the trucking industry to help ease fuel consumption. And that's a good 10-4 for a lot of truckers. Scientists at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory and NASA Lewis Research Center are working on developing an electric car that is economically attractive and feasible for mass production. Private firms are also working to develop and test electric cars for marketing. Such as this standard car, which was converted from an internal combustion engine to an all-electric engine run by batteries. Scientists are also working on a hybrid car that is run by either an internal combustion engine or a battery-driven electric motor or both. The electric car reflects NASA's research as a key in discovering an alternative source of energy in developing fuel-efficient technology in automobile transportation. Powering the liftoffs for the Apollo Saturn moon flights, 
the mammoth F1 engines gulped liquid propellants at the incredible rate of 760,000 liters per minute. The same type of fuel turbo pump used to send astronauts to the moon has a new application on Earth in marine transportation. The propulsion system of these hydrofoil boats is a direct derivative of one of the Saturn V fuel turbo pumps. The principle remains the same. The water is scooped into an inlet beneath the boat and channeled through the water jet pump. As the water is pumped through the nozzle, the tremendous amount of pressure provides the boat's liftoff and thrust. NASA's most ambitious project to date will pave new ways for aerospace research and transportation technology. The Space Shuttle's virtue of reusability reflects an incredible savings in fuel and manufacturing costs. The Space Shuttle will offer economical benefits in fuel efficiency by delivering satellites into orbit and carry space probes for launch into interplanetary trajectories. Technicians can repair orbiting satellites or retrieve malfunctioning satellites and take them back to Earth for repair. A futuristic plan is to build an orbiting platform stationary with respect to Earth to house various payloads now contained in individual satellites. This will reduce satellite congestion in our Earth's orbit. Future benefits in space shuttle transport technology will enable manufacturers to process materials in a complete vacuum. It's a transportation system that can pay for itself. Once again, NASA has launched this generation into a new era of transportation technology in space travel. Through NASA's primary goal to reach into outer space to gain new knowledge of the world that surrounds us, we learn more about ourselves and are able to enhance the quality of our lives down here on Earth. <laughs>